Well, you can keep the 100 degree weather. I don't need it. You don't want it? Don't need it. <laughs> hey, the last couple of days have been nice. Very. 80s, a little bit of a breeze. It's been Very good. Very nice. It's, uh, it's good back to school weather. And speaking of going back to school, Eric Kiesecker. Eric, pull that mic a little closer to you there, if you don't mind. He is in charge of transportation with the Berkeley County School System, and he has been a regular August guest on this program for a good six, seven, eight years now. Eric, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Matt, good pleasure morning. to be here. The last couple of years since COVID, every time we've had this conversation, it's been about how much we need bus drivers. I understand you're in a little bit better shape this year. Uh, we are. Uh, you know, I was saying earlier, you know, we're still in the tunnel, but the light is much brighter this year. Um uh, we and by the numbers, uh, we are two drivers short, but we're able to cover those routes. Um, so at this point right now, we have all of our routes covered, um, and uh, do um, because of some recruiting events that we held this past year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speaking with the trainers yesterday, we have over thirty active uh, trainees, uh, and we're hoping to get those by it's certified by uh, the middle to late September. Now, so you have two openings, but that doesn't count the 30 who will soon be right. coming aboard. Right. Right. So right. you should be in pretty good shape. There. We're in pretty good shape. Um, you know, we're, we're excited to get, to, to get the year started. You know, last year at this time, <laughs> the numbers weren't at the, you know, near that. Uh, mm -hmm. We were 15 drivers short. And, you know, unfortunately, we did have to cancel some runs during the year. Um, but because of the re recruiting events, our, the folks came out and uh, did, went through our certification process. And, you know, we're in much better shape now. When a bus route gets canceled, Eric, what is the notification process for the parents? And what is the process you go through to try to find a sub before you have to cancel that route? Most, in most cases, last year when a bus route was canceled, it was because of uh, late notice in the morning. Um, and generally, all, we have all of our substitutes already on a route uh, the day before. Uh, and it's just because we, don't, we didn't have the resources that morning um, to enable to get the run covered. Uh, and the notification goes out as early as we can notify someone. It goes out through our website. Uh, we have a dashboard. Uh, if you go to the berkeleycountyschools.org, uh, we have a dashboard in the transportation site that shows all of the different coverages that are going on that day <coughs> if, if, it's, if it's not covered by a sub, mm -hmm. a, a single sub. When, um, oh, go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. And we, we, try to, we try to get that uh, up to date by 5, 545 in 545. the morning. So I know you get complaints from parents when a route is canceled, and it's understandable, of mm -hmm. course, because that changes everybody's day when a bus route is canceled. So there's a lot of complaining that goes on. Have any of those parents who have complained signed up to take a course on bus driving so they can be a bus driver and help solve the problem? Yes, they have. Uh, one one of the things that we ask, uh, you know, when when a parent calls in and complains, which you know, obvious, they're they're going to, um, we say, hey, we have a bus operator opening. Would you be willing to help us out? And and some have replied yes, and and they have, have went through the certification process. That's awesome. Yes, it is. What do you make when you drive a bus now in the Berkeley County Schools? Well, due to the uh, salary increase from uh, West Virginia leg legislators, um, uh, a person uh, driving a bus coming in for the first year will make one hundred and forty-two dollars and forty-five cents a day. One forty-two forty-five a day, and uh, that uh, is how many hours? Typically, uh, a bus route is anywhere from uh, five to five and a half hours. Per day. Per day. That's take them and bring them home. Taking them and bringing them home. Yeah, right. absolutely. And, and what do you get when you drive a team to a game? Musselman's playing Hedgesville. we got to get these kids to Hedgesville. How much do I make to do that? You make a uh, – Berkeley County Schools pays uh, uh, based on a seven-hour day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get your hourly rate for any, anything outside of the AM and PM run. So you would pay, get paid hourly for your trip. Yeah, you stay there for the game, so that's yeah. maybe four hour night. Four, right? four to five hours, yeah. yeah. And we, you know, we have trips that uh, go for the weekend, so you get mm -hmm. you get to you get every hour that you're on duty. Oh no, kidding! Oh yeah. So twenty four hours, forty eight hours, oh, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Maybe time to start learning how to drive a bus, man. There you go. I'm <laughs> thinking about that. Trip. I'm thinking right now. I, I got that. a seat for you. <laughs> <laughs> take us through the process. Uh, how long does it take? You mentioned you have 30 uh, active trainees right now. If someone is listening this morning and says, hey, I, I, I would be able to maybe help out, how long before they go from today to actually sitting in that driver's seat? It generally takes six to eight weeks. Uh, West yeah. Virginia has a, a very, um, uh, what do I want to say, uh, it's, it's not a tough process, but it's rigorous. Uh, okay. it, it, 
you know, West Virginia, and I, I feel the same way. I, if as a parent, I want to know that my kid's safe on a bus, and so we take that very seriously. Uh, safety is our primary concern, so we want to know that the bus driver is able to drive the bus, you know, secondhand. Uh, so it does take about six to eight weeks. It's a combination of classroom experience uh, and, and gaining knowledge, and then uh, we we do require uh, driving um, twelve hours of driving. And that, with someone then with supervising someone, right. in that seat right behind you. Yes, we have we have four trainers. Okay. Um, so the the trainer is with you at all times. Um, the the only when you get certified, um, the, you have a ride along. Um, but then after that, then you go on your own. And that training is all done through your, your office, schools. through your department. Mm -hmm. So the, you, you've got to have the buses to do that training as well. Does that then happen, say, during the middle of the day? So if there are bus runs in the morning and in the afternoon, that training occurs middle of the day? Training occurs any other time than the a.m. and p.m. run. <laughs> it, 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 night, weekends, uh, we, yeah. we don't. We do not limit our train uh, trainers to just between uh, their bus runs. Mm -hmm. uh, they train uh, whenever they can. Uh, we through COVID, we realized we had to be a little more flexible in our training. Um, so you get one-on-one -on -one training now. All right. We talked a minute ago about buses that need to take teams places, and that happens constantly. Soccer teams, middle of the week, football teams, weekends, but there's freshmen and JV and others. So what happens when that bus that normally is in an afternoon run at 2.30 to 4 o'clock, something like that, now has to leave at 2 o'clock to take a team somewhere? Well, what we used to do, it was called a trip dock. Um, so the, the driver who took that trip, we would replace with a sub um, so that we could keep the yellow bus um, going on these trips. Mm -hmm. uh, because of our driver shortage, we have had to contract uh, a, a few services out. Mm -hmm. I will say this, though. We had over 1,600 trips last year, and our yellow buses took 80% of them. How many buses do you have, Eric? Uh, we added four runs this year, uh, so we have 243 full-time routes. Does that mean you have 243 drivers? We have 241 right now. Yeah, because minus two. <laughs> two. Minus two, right. right. But we, we look to get those filled within the next couple of weeks. And total buses. How many buses are there? Uh, we have, I, th I believe our count is 304. All right. How often do you rotate those out of service? It's somewhere between 12 and 14 years. Uh, uh, the state of West Virginia reimburses us on a 12-year depreciation cycle. So we, we don't like to keep them more than 12 years uh, if, we, if we don't have to. But there are cases that the, it, it, a bus may not have a lot of miles on it after 12 years, so we'll keep it a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, but a, as, as the bus gets older, there's more maintenance involved and more of the things break down. So mm -hmm. we, we like to keep our buses at, at, as new as possible. What does a new bus cost? We paid 142000 for a bus last year. What did a new bus cost when you started with Berkeley County Schools? 67000 What year was that? <laughs> 2006. So just in those 18 years, mm -hmm. you've doubled the price plus on yes. a bus. Mm -hmm. are, are the buses safer? Are they better? Is there a reason why they cost so much more other than life costs more? I, um, I would say no. They're, well, there are a few more safety features on them uh, than when I came in. Uh, uh, we didn't have – we had a combination of automatics and um, manuals, so we've gone to all automatic buses, mm -hmm. um, all automatic doors. Um, it, the the safety features probably play a little bit of cost in that. Um, however, I think it's just the fact that you know things are more as you as you mm -hmm. you know the years go on. On a regular bus route, how much of I eighty one factors into your routes? Very little. We try to stay off I-81 as much as we can. Now, we know that there are some cases that we have to, um, and, and particularly trips, right. if, if we have trips. Um, however, uh, we have very few buses on the regular route that use uh, Interstate 81. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very smart. Yeah. I try to avoid it as much as I can, too. I, I want to go back to the, the older buses. Um, if, if I've got a car that I'm getting ready to maybe get a new car, I trade it in or I look to sell it. What do you do with the, the buses as they age out? Uh, we, uh, we determine which ones we're going to auction. 
Um, okay. So I, I go to the board and yeah, have them declared surplus, uh, and then we ha- we auction them off. And that auction's open to anybody. Anyone. Yep. We uh, since. Uh, <clears throat> We started doing an on, online auction um, during COVID, and we found that it was um, much, much better for us. So right. we've stuck with that. Um, yeah, so it's open to anyone. When is that auction typically? Typically, it's in May. Okay. Yeah, but we've had we've had a, a, a challenge this past year with getting our newer buses. We generally get our newer buses around November, December, but uh, I, I guess because industry wide and it's just not the manufacturer we get them from Mm -hmm. industry wide in in school bus uh there's been a delay in in getting buses so we get our new buses in november december we decide which ones we're going to sell uh and in february and then the process starts then it's usually in may do you ever sell them to a family band (laughs) just asking for the partridge family just in case i don't think we've i don't think we've ever sold them to a band but um, there is a company that usually buys a bulk load of them, and they go to Guatemala. No kidding. Yep. Yeah. How, how much do uh, the folks in Harper's Ferry subcontract with you still? Was it River Riders or whoever? Varsity was? Travel. Varsity yeah, Travel. They, yeah, they do most of it. They do a lot of it. And yeah. how, how many of your routes do they end up handling? Oh, they don't, ha- they don't handle any route. Mm-hmm. Uh, they... Uh, they will handle some of our, um, you know, our schools are getting full, uh, so we have overflow students. Mm-hmm. Um, they handle some of our overflows where the, our yellow buses can't, uh, they don't travel that way. Um, they will handle some of our students that are considered uh, McKinney-Vento students, which it, a McKinney-Vento student is a student that has been displaced uh, from their regular home. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we do some of that. Mm-hmm. They, they do some of that. And everybody kind of helps in that. It, Yellow Bus, our Epic Division, and Varsity. Monday morning is the first day of school. Take me through your day Monday morning. Uh, I'm going to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning, get to work, um, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then um, uh, Dr. Sachs has asked that uh, uh, the s- senior staff be out to greet our bus drivers as they go on their way. Um, and it's, it's routine stuff, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it, it's an everyday thing, covering routes, answering questions, answering phone calls. You know, uh, there are some, you know, some situations where on the two way we have, you know, this kid's not here or, you know, something like that, but mostly routine stuff. What is the law for school buses and traffic in regards to stopping for a school bus, passing a school bus? Whenever you see the red lights flashing and the red stop sign that comes out, all traffic must stop. Uh, unfortunately, um, that doesn't happen all the time. Um, just some numbers. We do a, a survey uh, one day per year um, in West Virginia uh, that is designed to show us how many cars are illegally passing us. Last year, in that one day, there were 2,290 uh, incidents. In the state? In the state. Times 180 school days in a year? Yeah. It, happen- it, it happens every day. And wow. part <laughs> that's why I, I I'm I'm glad you have me on here because I really need the, the motorists out there to understand that you know come Monday morning we're going to be picking up kids we have 200 and you know 41 routes 241 buses out there where traffic is going to have to stop and so please please be aware that you know when you see the red lights slow down stop. How do you determine where those stops are? Um, I, I know occasionally when I've gotten behind a bus and they've stopped at a house and it seems like they go two houses down and then maybe two more, and I'm thinking, man, when I was a kid, I remember we walked from my house down to this one particular corner and then we kind of all got picked up there. How do you determine that? Well, the state the, the state recommends that uh, bus stops be more than two tenths of a mile apart, but there are some situations where, depending on the safety aspect, busyness it, of a roadway, busyness that sort of, of thing. a road, we do not want kids walking down right. a busy road. Um, we try to do, uh, you know, we try to make these stops where we have a lot of kids in one place. Mm-hmm. However, sometimes it just doesn't work that like that. Of the, do you have any way of knowing of the total school? population in berkeley county how many actually ride a bus as opposed to how many are close enough that maybe they walk to school and or parents take them to school 
I, we did the numbers last year. We had um, we were just shy of twenty thousand students in Berkeley County. Uh, we transported uh, just under fifteen thousand. So the majority, the majority are of them are on, on the bus. a school bus. Mm-hmm. And that route, what's the earliest someone is getting picked up in the morning to head off to either high school or middle school? Uh, I think the earliest stop we have is six thirty-five. Okay. Yeah, and we drop them off at seven twenty, seven twenty-five. Yeah, some of those Back Creek Valley buses right. are <laughs> they're the long runs. Delegate Michael Hornby, who also owns this place, so his questions move to the front of the line quickly. Eric, <laughs> he asks, how many displaced students does Berkeley have, and do they all geographically get picked up in county? No. Uh, last year, the numbers are rising every year. When when we really started transporting uh, the McKinney Vento students um, was about four years ago. We were, the numbers were around eighty. Last year we had a hundred and ninety six requests for transportation, and we did. Berkeley County was able to do about a third of those. Um, however, it, it's generally situations where I know the far farthest one that we picked up last year was in um, Harpers Ferry. Okay, and we've 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 in the past have have picked up uh, students in Williamsport, Greencastle, but um, it's the f- a federal law that we we have to transport them. And we are talking, by the way, there, Keysecker, head of transportation for the Berkeley County School System. School starts on Monday. It's uh, summer, so it's too early to talk about snow. But nevertheless, <laughs> school cancellations, weather related things, hurricanes, floods, whatever, mm-hmm. factor into a school year. What's the process for weather cancellations, Eric? If we know that there's going to be uh, inclement weather coming, uh, our team at Transportation uh, is out and about at by 4.30 in the morning uh, to check roads. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a five-member team that goes out throughout the county. We all have areas that we check. Um, uh, they report to me uh, by quarter after 5, 5 o'clock. And then I, I report to uh, Dr. Sachs uh, wh- what my suggestion would be for, you know, is it safe or is it not safe? Many of the decisions are made the night before. Mm-hmm. You have a pretty good idea mm-hmm. at, at that point. Obviously, that's better for everybody, for your drivers and whatever. As you get bad weather, does the word go out to the drivers, this is not the morning to cancel on me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you if school's closed, but otherwise, this yeah, is not Yeah, a- yeah. I, I, I mean, we've been lucky the past few years as far as weather. Um, we have been able to uh, let the, um, the school community know ahead of time. Uh, it, bus drivers are pretty good about that. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, they're, they're alert. Yeah. Uh, you got a question, too, from uh, John Alderton who asked, if, uh, if they don't do transportation, do they pay mileage to the parents who have to do it in, the, in the, their place? For... For the students that you have to transfer out of county or uh, whatever. The Kenny Vento students. Yeah. We kind of use a de- decision flow chart. Is we ask the parent, um, are you able to transport yourself? If so, we will reimburse you mileage. Then it goes to, can we get them on a yellow school bus? Mm-hmm. Then it goes to um, our EPIC division. And then uh, uh, lastly, if none of those can work, then it's uh, – varsity travel does epta do any transportation for you yes they primarily transport our um, uh, special needs pre-k students okay very good i had a question about uh, small vans with bcs berkeley county schools on the van is is that uh, related to the that's schools? the epic there's that's epic vans right yeah okay all right very good uh in regards to recruiting new bus drivers you got a class coming through of 30 plus when is your next class for bus drivers so anyone that wants to pick up the trade it is open to anyone that wants to come we do not do a general class okay um it, the, the substitute bus operator uh posting is always up uh on our website and uh, all you have to do is apply uh, we'll call you for an interview and that, that process starts that way when new buses come in to replace old buses, do the drivers with most seniority get the the first call on a new bus, or do you just assign them where they're needed? We, the way we assign buses, we take the buses that have the most mileage, or are the oldest, and replace them. So it's not about seniority; not it's about, about mileage and the, the you know, most of the time the bus that we're replacing is at the close to the mileage or year that we're not going to get reimbursed for. 
So, Rob, you might be able to drive your bus to 300, almost 400,000 miles. Well, you know, you just About have to, to turn 361 on 361. the CRV, baby. <laughs> there you go. There you go. How many miles do you usually get on a bus? Right. We have some buses that the state says that they're not going to reimburse us any money on a bus with 180,000 or more. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a few buses that have 190, 200,000 on them. Do you have any electric buses this year? No. Will you be getting electric buses? Mm-hmm. That is a later conversation. <laughs> possible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's possible. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of hurdles. Um, uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot that has to come together in order to get an electric bus. Um, one of the big issues we have is, is how, to, how are we going to pay for them? Mm-hmm. Um, because an electric bus is $380,000 without the charging unit. And you're currently paying one forty-five, 40, yes, for a bus, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that does present some challenges. And we, I think, uh, there's an electric bus manufacturing plant in the state. Yeah, it's called Green Power. It's yeah. in, I believe, it's in near Charleston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They and they, th- some of our counties have their bus. Uh, West Virginia uh, Governor Justice um, um, allotted, I think, f- was it fifteen million? I think to buy uh, thirty thirty-seven electric buses but they were dispersed throughout places that you know could use them All right uh where do you folks fill up we have we have two uh, uh diesel places uh one is in mill behind mill creek intermediate for the south end and then we have our uh, garage at 88 harlow springs road what's the rate on diesel now that's actually not too bad. Uh, <clears throat> we we bid that out every year um so we we pay on a variance <clears throat> excuse me so we, I think we pay like maybe, I think it's three or four cents more than what uh, the, the, the company does at the refinery. Okay. About a minute left. Eric, anything else that somebody needs to know in regards to the new school year and bus transportation? Just please be aware that we're starting school on Monday. Uh, I can't stress enough, um, you know, the safety of our students. Um, nationally, uh, the majority of um, issues – are because people are illegally passing our buses at bus stops. Um, that's that creates a. It's you know it, it's just a safety concern of ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would really like to not ever see someone pass our bus with the stop sign out because it just creates a dangerous um, uh, situation. Don't pass the school bus, Eric. Thanks so much for coming in. Absolutely, my pleasure. I enjoy our August visits even without Mr. Potts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we get him in here one day. <laughs> good to see him again. <laughs> I saw him one morning at, uh, what's that, the, the place there on Warm Springs, the Exxon, what's that called? AC&T or whatever? Yes, oh, yeah, AC&T, AC&T, yes. I saw him one morning, he was, he was heading in to start his day, he said, I'm not going to be around tomorrow, I'm going out for a colonoscopy. I'm like, oh, that's good information, thank you. <laughs> yeah, didn't need to know that. Brown's a good dude. <laughs> All right, we're back with more after this. Together when mom sang along.